All right, I've got my seals and stuff on my drums. Um, outer ones, you can fully tell they're lathe cut, pretty thick. It's the one, the only ones that's going to fit on the the, uh, the piston itself. If you have the wrong one, you'll know it'll be really hard to get on, or it'll be way loose. So there's that. Now, when you're doing the other ones, the inner ones are O-rings, and I've already already checked this out, so I know which ones are which. When they give you a whole bunch of O-rings to check out. For different vehicles different applications what you want to do is see how it just barely fits inside of that there and there that's the right one if it's hard to get in it's not right if it's too loose it's not right this way so when you put it in your drum it pushes it out just enough so it makes the seal so we'll get these put in That doesn't have one there, we'll just fix this here. Now like I said at the beginning, if you're not familiar with these, always put your snap rings back in where they go and then you won't get messed up uh, which one goes where. And you can always keep them where they go. Uh, sometimes different vehicles, that's how they uh, they do the end play is the uh, thickness of the uh, snap ring so it's just easier to keep them all together all right we've got our o-ring in both sides we'll move up the outside the inside and the same with the piston the inside and the out don't need a lot just has to be slippery and we will just slowly work it down. Now, same thing on the other drum. I believe this is the forward drum, this is the, the direct. So this is first gear, this is third. And push these down. Sure, good workout for your thumbs, isn't it? Alright, we'll do this one first. Top snap ring. Bottom, this could be identical, but like I say, you never know, so. I always keep them separate. That way I know I'm not getting screwed up. Has this little ring here so it doesn't wear out the piston with the bevel spring. Put the spring in and put our snap ring back in it. Now a lot of the times they have to be knocked into place to help put that in there. I'll just leave this right there. Then we'll go to the press and press this in. Put the drum in the arbor press. I'll return spring. And then we need something to push it down with. Looks like we're going to end up using this. right down, lock it, and then we'll drop the snap ring on the floor. All right. Put the snap ring in, make sure it's seated all the way. Awesome. Now we'll uh, put the clutches in it. The kit I got has two different styles of stills, thick and thin. So what we're going to do is kind of mix and match and see if we can get the best one. I'm going to start with this one first. Um, I'm calling this the direct. It has the, uh, uh, the uh, sun gear on the bottom of it. If you notice, the stills have an identification mark here. 
forwards have teeth all the way around. The direct are directional. Um, they are dished, but they're very hard to see the dish on. What I do is set it down, and you can see it doesn't move, but if you turn it over, see how it picks up so it's a little bit dished. So you got to make sure they're all going the same direction. You want to put them all together and make sure there's no gaps because you want them all going the same direction so your clearance is right. So when I put them up, I'm going to turn them over. I'm going to do one at a time. Directs are usually thicker, so I'm going to put the thick ones in first. In, clutch, turn it over. Because we want the dish plates to go all the same direction. Bring in, check clearance, and look up. Rear clutch clearance should be between. I got this in another another kit. Rear clutch kit clearance should be thirty thousandths to fifty five thousandths. So we'll take. A forty thousandths drill bit, and it barely goes underneath it. So we're into specs for the rear or the direct, what I call it. Put the forwards, forward with the bevel spring here has a bottom dish plate. Put that in. These are flat. They are not directional. And we'll put these clutches in like so. like they gave us thicker plates. Now this one's fun because you've got a top plate like that. So what you have to do is reach up through here, hopefully, and be able to check the end clearance. And I'm not going to be able to do that. What we can see is you can see right here where the lip is, where this rides. We'll have to measure the clearance of that lip. And the forward clutch should be less than ten thousandths. And wow, we are right about ten thousandths there. So we are really good. I want to check it. Yep, barely moves. So now what we're going to do is redo it again. This has this that sits in there. Now there is no washer between here and here, remember? When we took it apart. We'll set that down. And we'll restack our clutches. Remember, I just remembered something. When I took this apart, this had an extra, this had an extra steel in it, and I was able to uh, put a different clutch in it, thinner clutch, and get it set up right. So that's why, it, that's why I remember this steel was in here to take up clearance. That's right. They didn't have the 
the right kit. So now that we've got this, then remember this had this thrust washer here. We're going to put some lube on it or some trance gel, some gel to keep it in place. And then on that, now what we want to do is lube this side and the bushing while we're here. And we'll set that on. Put our snap ring. All right, drums are done. We're ready to start putting the case together. Now that we've got our clutches in our drum, our direct drum, remember, this has these little rollers that need to go in here. And what we have to do is we put a little bit of that assembly lube. Why well, you like the, the little thicker green stuff? For stuff like this because I want them to stay in the place. We put a little thin little seal around that. Now we get to take all these a couple at a time and put them all the way around. Why these things aren't encapsulated I don't know. I've only come across one that I've built. I haven't built that many of these that was a capsulated that these didn't come out of. All the rest of them I've had to rebuild all of them. A little time consuming but you got to do this then you have to do this one for the servo for the rear servo We'll show you that in a little bit. Slowly work your way around. Make sure when you take these apart, I think, think I said this when I was taking them apart, not to lose any of these. It's not like you can just buy them and people have this stuff in stock for this older, older transmissions. What's worse is when you take it apart and there is some missing and you don't realize it, that somebody, whoever built it before, put it back together or some of them have gone. I've had that happen to me a few times. So when you take it apart they fall out and you don't know until you put it back together. And I'm very cautious about what I do. I have a little basket to put all my stuff in so I don't lose anything. Great. All right. There's your there's your direct drum. Now the first thing on the case if you remember the last thing we took off was the shift linkage. Okay, first thing we're going to do is put this, is put the shift linkage back in. Take your seal, we're going to tap it with a little mallet. So it's in nice and flush. Then we will take bolt and washer off of here. Always lube everything up and put this in like so. Remember the direction of these, these were both facing up. I believe it was like that. And double check it though. We don't want to put it in backwards and have to redo it again after we've got the whole unit together, right? Okay, now we've got this put in. I had to go back and look at my video to make sure which way these went because it matters which direction they go, here, this way, whatever. It's about like that. Then we'll put our rooster comb on. Now if you notice, you can't put it on backwards, so it only goes on one direction. We'll put this on. And put our lock washer and our nut.
see if I've got take this down now again you don't want to be too brutal with this that is a pipe threaded pipe that you're actually doing because it's hollow all the way through. Okay. Now that this is put on, what we want to do is we want to get our detent put on. Remember we took our we took our little uh, a little R clip out of here that makes it go past where that detent goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my R clip. It's teeny 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 set that off the side so I don't lose it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our detent back in. Our spring. Now some of these are check balls and some of them are this little uh, bullet looking thing. The device. What we'll have to do is we have to push that down. Now I usually put a rag over this so it doesn't go flying across the shop in case I miss it like that. Let's see if we can do it with just my hand without using a screwdriver. Oh, just like so. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our little rod back through here. Hold that up. Put our R clip back in. Okay. Now we won't over travel and it won't come out. Put our uh, detent in. Now there is a seal that we need to put in. That seal right there. You always want to redo these. You don't want to ever rebuild one of these and not do this. You're just asking for problems when you do that. All right, put that in. The wrench, and we'll wrench this all the way down. All right, I'll tighten this as much as I can by hand. There we go. All set. All new seals in it. We'll set the uh, case up on a holder here so I can get a good angle shot inside and then we'll start putting it together. Got the case up on the, my little holder here. Um, hopefully you can see pretty good. Um, first thing we're going to do is put our, uh, put our drum in. Put our thrust washer on top of our drum here. Stick it off with, it, with a little bit of lube. And always, you want to put a little lube little ATF on all the areas. Um, with this, we need to put our bands in. So they, don't, they don't go through the back. You have to put them in through here and you have to put them in before you put drums and stuff in. So this band will sit right up here. You can't get it in after that drum's in, so we'll put that in first. Then we'll set our forward drum in. There we go. 
keep our band in there. Now on top of our direct drum, that was the forward, we got to put this washer. It has a steel washer here. If you notice, it's got little notches on each side. It only fits in one way. I'll glue that down, and then I'll glue this right on top of it. Then we'll put that drum in. Okay, I've got thick assembly lube holding everything in place and we'll set that drum in there and that's where the band rides on this. So you got to kind of hold the drum up and the band and then get everything down all the way up, up, right down. All right. <laughs> Next we have collar center support. This goes in next right through the back. Remember we have our bolts on the outside of the case, one on the bottom. What I do is I set this down here. And we find the bolt. This has got the little nipple on the end of it. We want to make sure that's lined up. We're not going to tighten these, we're just going to make sure we get the center support in the right spot. So, and it's, it, it, what it'll do is, with the pins, it'll level it out and keep it even. Got that one, and then... These two, we'll put these on the outside of the case. Just kind of helps keep this right where it's supposed to be. Now, so this next little bit gets kind of tricky. We have to put this band in. Again, we can't put this in after, we have to put it in before. There's a thrust washer, I'll erase in the bearing that I need to put in the bottom of the drum and then I'm going to, uh, with uh, my trance gel to hold it in place and then I got to put my sprag in and I got to put some trance gel on that to hold it in place because I got to turn this upside down and set it in there. Alright, now I've got everything lubed up in there, ready to go in. Now if you remember, when I took this apart, I had a heck of a time getting it apart because of the shaft. Because the rings came apart on the shaft. Well, I've got to put this in before I put my rear planet in. So I'm going to replace all the seals here, or all the rings on there, and put the thrust wire, or the bearing on here, and I'll show you how to put it, put it in. Okay, now that I've got my new rings, a thrust washer, we need to put that in there. Now remember if I had a hard time getting it out, it's because these, we'll get these apart from each other, we're, we're catching on it and I ended up having to break these to get this shaft out so I could get the band out and the rest of it apart. So what we gotta do is I'm gonna put a little lube on these, and try to center them, squirt some ATF down here, and hopefully I can get it down in one shot. ATF. 
kind of center these as much as possible. Hopefully, if I can get this baby to go right inside without any problems. This is probably the worst part of this transmission. Oh, right down. Oh, I couldn't have gotten any better. Awesome. Now that I already showed you that I had these glued in, we're going to put these, put this in. Got to kind of hold it, work it down, and hold the band out of the way. Trying to get the band caught, because it will get caught. Looks like we are good. We are all the way down. All right. We have a thrust washer. Goes right there. And we have our output shaft that's going to go on next. Of course, we want to lube this up. And there's two little ceiling rings that go right here and here. We'll carefully put these on. Make sure the openings are opposite each other. Carefully install the output. So, next is the plate that goes in back. This one, some of them have thrust washers that go on here. Some of them have bearings. This has a bearing. I will put this. I will uh, put a little lube on this to hold these in place. A little ATF on there. Then I'll show you what we need to do. Got everything kind of glued in there in the place. Now there's a gasket that goes between these two places that needs to be set into place. Then we will set. If you notice, there's a, there's a bushing here too. I'm going to put a little lube on this. And we will set this. on the output shaft, just like so. Get the gasket lined up. With the back support in place, we need to put our rear pump in there. If you remember, our little uh, Woodruff key was worn out. I can't find another one, so we have to use this. Um, I know it's horrible, but we're going to put it in the opposite direction. So hopefully, it will just start wearing the other side. We should be okay. Put the Woodruff key in there. 
Again, always a little ATF. I'm going to set my inner gear in first. Just like that. And my outer. I looked at these really close. I didn't see a difference top and bottom. Again, a little lube. I'm going to put our rear plate on. We'll start each of the screws just like anything else and we'll get them down so they're just touching and then we'll tighten them all up at once or separately but get them all tight. We want to get them all the way down and touching. Well, you remember this was kind of tough to get these off when I was taking this apart. I think somebody put them on a little bit too tight. But if you just take them down a little bit, it'll help center up the pump. Or I should say the pump cover. down like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the small one first by hand. Wow. Then I'm going to go in a star pattern with the big ones. Whoop! Ah, didn't want that to happen. We'll do that so it doesn't move again. In the star pattern, we'll just do it nice and snug, as snug as we can with our screwdriver. One thing you want to do is over tighten the pump. Awesome. Next is the governor. If you remember right, we had a check ball that keeps the governor straight, keeps the governor lined up at the holes. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of slimly lube in this and put our check ball in there to hold it in place. We'll put our governor on. I'm going to turn this around. <laughs> if you notice, the holes are up high and the holes you just want to match the holes up. If you put it in upside down, these holes aren't going to line up and your governor's not going to work. And you can't really change it in the car. You're going to take the whole tail shaft off. So you got to make sure you put this in right. One thing you don't want to do is have to do something again because you weren't paying attention to what you were doing. like that and our snap ring hold that in place awesome <laughs> next we're going to put the rings on here this is the rings for the governor for the governor tube we'll slide this tube on here in a second but we'll put the rings on first These are non-locking rings. So they just they just butt together. They don't come over and latch and hang on. There is some of them. There's one that actually latches and holds in. These aren't that style. We'll put all four. these on right now with them on just like any other rings set you want to put them 
about a third of a way from each other. So it's a third, a third, a third. You don't want them right next to each other. We'll get them centered as much as possible. And we'll take our ring. If you notice, it's beveled here, so this this will go down first. It's beveled on this side. And we have our three pipes that we got to install. Okay, I got my three pipes in. As you see, you can't get them mixed up. If you do, I mean, there's really there's no way to do that. I'm going to put a little lube on this. I'm going to stall this carefully. We got to put the pipes in as we're putting it down. So they're about the third again. Let's see if we can get these to cooperate. Pass the rings now. Well, we'll just lightly tap this down. What we're going to do is get the pipes to go in. We're we'll past the ceiling rings. There, as you can hear, I'm down. Pipes are in, and everything's rattling on the bench. <laughs> Next. We will have, let me turn this, another hole here for a check ball, for the speedometer, for right there. So again, we'll put a little bit of lube. Put that in there. And we will carefully There we go. Just like that. And there's a snap ring that goes on top. Awesome. Okay, we've got that set up. Got the governor on there. Support, speedometer gear. Next is the outer gasket. Now remember, somebody glued these down. Do you 
Should never have to glue these down. You should be able to put them on dry all the time. I mean, that's the only way they really need to be on there. Um, there's no reason to glue everything. I got my tail housing here. I'm going to really tap the rear seal in here. It won't fit in my arbor press, so I can't do that. But put the new seal on and the housing right on like that. Bolts. Remember which bolt goes where. I believe whoop, this one with the bracket was over here for the uh, line for the modulator. I believe. Bad thing about this is I don't have torque specifications for all this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put everything down. I'm going to tighten up to where it feels good. Hopefully not over tighten anything. Now this one has this in there. What I'm going to do is just set this kind of like that. I kind of know what angle it goes on. And I'm just going to tighten these to want, you know, nice and snug. I don't want to do too much. Don't want to do too little. Again, doing a star pattern. I'll, uh, I'll get this taken off the uh, holder, sit it on the bench, and we'll, uh, we'll finish it up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we get the servos together. I've already got the case up on the, on the bench, but we need to get the rest of it together so we can put the top of it on. Uh, we have the servos for the, the rear band and the front band. Um, remember, these are kind of tough to get apart, but we'll get them back together now 
Now, like I told you before, when you're looking for your O-rings, since there are so many different sizes, I just try to find one that just barely fits down in the hole. And that is usually the one that fits on the uh, wrong one. That fits on the uh, the servo itself. Same with this one. Got one here for this. One should just barely fit on the outside of this. That one's pretty close. Let's check this one out. That could be the one right there. Put that inside. Perfect. Now we we'll have another one on the out. This is a lathe cut seal. You see it right there. Holds it there. Yeah, and if you see it, it's too small. Fell right in it. That's the wrong one. So carefully take your pick. If I can. So it's got to be the thicker one, which is that one, and set it right in place, just like that. Now if you remember, this goes inside of here, and then we'll have that set on top, right on here. But we need to find the O-ring for this. Oh, look at that. It's a little tight. Let's see the next one down. Oh, that's a little big. And that one's too loose. Okay, we'll put the O-ring on that part of the piston. We'll get a little lube here. that through. Push this one on top. Just like that. And we'll put our screw washer assembly on it. And hand tighten it. Alrighty, take our housing, put some lube in it, I know i got a spring here somewhere, our spring, piston, we'll put our snap ring in, Take some air. Inside. So that one, if you notice. Got a lot of blow by here. Should get the nipple on. You can see it working. So we'll do our other one. Same thing with this. We'll need to see. It's probably that one. 
and it is. Put that all ring on it. These are done here. These are just for different sizes, different vehicles, different applications, so you will always have extra O-rings when you're doing these. We will put a little lube right inside of here. We'll push the little button up, push the piston in. We will put a little lube on this one. this piston in there. Now we will take this and we will put it in the uh, arbor press and press this down so we get the snap ring in. Now that I've got this on the arbor press, you do have a little notch here and one right here. You have to line up the snap ring on here and what I'll do is I'll put the arbor press down And guide it into place. And then we will install the snap ring. There. Got that all in. The tab lined up. Snap ring's in place. Now we'll put our uh, arm in. Now, if you remember right, we had to knock the pin out, so we could take this this out, right? And all have these little bearings in here. So now we get to stack this the same way we did the direct drum. Do is get some lube. Coat the inside of this really good with. Some trance gel. I like the green stuff for this. It's thicker, holds everything in place. And then we just get to stack these around. There are people who uh, who will put lube around this and stack all the bearings around it and stuff it in. You can do that. I'm used to doing this. It's all what you feel comfortable with. Okay, we've got the last one, looks like, here. Get them all pushed in all the way around. Want to make sure they're all flat. And what we'll do is we'll test fit our pin. Oh, come on. Got one that didn't want to go in. Let's see if we can sneak it in. It's like so. All right. Now that I've got that on, what I do is put washers on both sides.
Put washers on both sides. Carefully take the pin out and get this into place. Now we want to make sure we line up the hole. Washer came out of space a little bit. Do it so you can see that I can see the hole right down through that. Now we should be able to take the hammer and tap the pin right back into place. All right, now we're all back together and we're ready to go. The servo and the valve body is on. All right, we're ready to put everything back on the bottom of it. I'm going to move my uh, pin that I used to center the center support. Now remember, right here we have this pipe that needs to be put in. I've replaced the O-ring on it. We want to put a little lube on this. And put this right down into that. Now the rear band, start with the, uh, the dowel and the pin. Let me readjust this a little bit. We want to put our uh, adjusting pin or adjusting bolt on the outside and screw it in so it just barely has come through. On this one, we have this and this. We'll get this so it's sitting on top of our adjusting bolt. Slide the band into place. What I do is I take take my other band little strut here and put a little gel on it to kind of hold it in place. Kind of hold it up. So when I put this in, I can watch to see that it's getting, and I can see, see if I'm pulling that up, it's moving the band. I want to adjust the band up a little bit, so I know, and get my bolts. This is the center support one. I can see I'm moving the band when I roll this up. So I'm going to turn this in as far as I can by fingers. I'm just going to leave it there. It will be tight, but we can adjust it later. Again, I'm going to again I'm going to just oh, wrong one. Again, I don't have specs for this, so what I'm going to do is just tighten these up. Nice and snug to what I feel is good. You can hear it clicking because it's all the way off. Nice and snug. All right. Make sure I'm still connected. I can still see the band move. All right. We'll do the forward one now. If you can see, it's got a, a anchor pin for the bolt here, and then we'll have to go on the other side. A longer one that has to go on the back side. This one's a little tougher to get in, but I'll do the same thing. I'll put some trans assembly lube on it, and. Carefully, get 
get this. into place which is easier said than done what I might do is do the opposite direction let's put the gel on this side all right that's easier there we go now with this What I want to do is leave this a little loose. I want this to have a little bit of play in it. And I can see right now that I am way tight because this is a brand new band. So let's loosen this up. Loosen the adjusting rod up. And we're going to loosen it up so we can get everything in. Now you can see I'm, I'm a little loose now. Actually got some movement in that. Alright, <clears throat> because what we have to do, if you remember right, there's two pipes that go from here to here. And this has to come up a little bit so I can get the pipes in and the valve body on. So I need to have this come up just a little bit. So, maybe I'll do it the other direction. Put the pipes in this. Sometimes it works either way, you know, sometimes you can put the pipes in here, sometimes in that one. All depends on how your day is going, I should say. Carefully feed the pipes in. And as you're going up, you need to get your manual valve. In the right spot, kind of wiggle it. I think they could have done something a little bit different for here, but who knows? Just a little bit. It just doesn't want to go in. Let's see if I can maneuver this pipe just a little bit. Get it to cooperate. There we go. around so I can get my kick down in place. Alright. What I'm gonna do is take this down until it just touches.
B bolt. And these are the four that I didn't really need to take out. But I screwed up when I did with the valve body. Those don't get lock washers, these do. To loosen this up a little bit to get it to drop because it's hitting. So you better to have your original bolt in it when you're doing this. There we go. Then just snug these. You don't want them way tight. Well, I was lucky. The uh, battery ran out and I was dying, but I noticed that I, after I charged it for a minute that I, the only thing you missed was me tightening these bolts down um, and these. Other than that, we're ready to go. I've got my shifter in, kicked down. Next, well, since we got a new band, we're going to adjust the band and to the specs, you need a quarter inch piece of uh, steel here. And what you do is you put it between the adjusting screw and that and you tighten it up so it's got a quarter inch of clearance and that is nine sixteenths I'm going to put a magnet on this so it does not fall you'd hate to have to uh, completely take your tranny apart because your little piece of steel fell down there when you're doing your band adjustment. Get this out. Alright, there's our band adjustment for the forward band. <coughs> we'll do our rear one here in a minute. We're going to get the, the, uh, the front valve body on. doesn't really have, it's only got that one uh, blow off valve and then the two big valves that we're going to put in. Put, yep. These on. Again, I wish I did, I wish I had specs for these, but I don't. They might not even have specs for them because they might not have had torque wrenches back when these came out. So I'm just going to put these down nice and tight. You know, until it feels good, but not over tight.
All right, now we'll get our pipes in. I replaced the O-ring on this one already. And we'll get this in place. Let's see, we have a long one here. This one goes in the back. You need to tap them in. Don't use a regular hammer. Use a dead blow so it doesn't hurt it. Um, you can see somebody really painted it pretty hard right there. We'll put this one in. Just like so. And then this one goes. Just like that. Now, when the pan's in, it'll hold these in place so they won't come out. Now we'll put put the uh, filter on. And there is a little retainer. Goes under that pipe. And then locks onto that. Holds that filter in place. Last but not least, I'm going to roll this Pull it this way. And we can put, remember, we'll put all two valves in. A little ATF or lube, whatever you've got. Big spring has a comb that sits on the end of the valve. Okay. Top one has a little uh, a little stop in it. Pan on. Just like that. Notice this is the uh, cork gasket, so when we torque it down, something's a little high. mistake that style goes there not down the pipe there we go and we'll start all our pan bolts now when you do a cork gasket a lot of these older ones are they're not the felt or fiber excuse me um, once you get to get it torqued the specs about 105 inch pounds don't go around it again. Just do it once and that's it. You want to run it down with a speed wrench, speed wrench first. And then torque it and then that's it. Leave them alone. done so we can flip it around and put the pump and adjust the rear band and we'll be about ready. Get 
So you just want to barely take these down so they touch. I think I need a little bit more socket. Do this to about 105 inch pounds and only do it once. iron. Now we're going to put the pump on. Casket should, or the seal should just sit, just like so. Pump only goes on one direction. Fumble fingers. <clears throat> Again, I don't have any specifications for these. I've looked in my books, it doesn't go back this far. A lot of my old time books just say tighten, so I'm just going to put it so it's nice and snug. Now, if you remember, two bolts here for the center support. I'm going to snug these up. Now, for the rear band, what you want to do is you want to take this in until, well, that's about down. You want to take one and a quarter turn, and that's where you want to leave it. One and a quarter turn out, and that's it. Then you want to tighten your your adjusting nut up so it doesn't come loose. All right. We have our governor access port. This is in case your governor sticks, you'll be able to pull it off in the car. These just have regular screws.
tighten this by hand with your screwdriver. Before we put the bell housing on it, we'll swap it around. We got the uh, modulator to put on. These have a, the long modulator pin that goes into the uh, valve body. Got this nice thin wrench here. Snug that up good. All right, got our bell housing here. Start bolts. And of course, this you can use your gun on. Thunderbird. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was fun to build one again. It's been a long time. Uh, hopefully we'll do some more when you do. Remember when you're doing an older tranny, make sure you know what's available before you start knocking bushings out. Make sure you can find parts. There are a lot of different designs. I mean this is a medium case, they have a small case, they have a large case, and they all take different parts and different kits. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we'll see you next time. Later.